out to everybody with anxiety in the building. Yeah, we're here. Oh man, I used to struggle with my anxiety real bad. And I would do all the things for my anxiety, like the CBD tinctures, essential oils, meditation, breathing techniques, gratitude, all the things. And then I got an emotional support animal to travel with me everywhere. We adopted him at the shelter, and he's so cute. We wanted to know what breed he was, so we did a little DNA test on him. And I haven't even done a DNA test on myself. <laughs> because I'm not trying to get framed for no murder. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I've seen that episode, nice try. <laughs> but I'll test my dog, because he's not living a life of crime. He's fine. <laughs> so we did his little DNA test. Come to find out, he is Yorkie, Maltese, Shih Tzu, Cocker Spaniel, Miniature Schnauzer, Mexican, and Puerto Rican. <laughs> Hello, scholarship. <laughs> his accent is all messed up. <laughs> I can't understand a word, he barks. <laughs> I wish I could speak bark though. Even though my dog rarely barks. Like the only time he barks is if he sees another dog across the street and he wants to go play with it, but he's on a leash so he can't get to it, then he'll bark. But even then, it's not an aggressive bark. It's a very friendly bark. It's very like, hey, <laughs> hey, <laughs> what's your name? <laughs> He's a really sweet dog. I wish I could speak bark. I wish I could speak Spanish. I mean, I've been saying that for a long time, so I guess I don't wish hard enough. Otherwise, I would just learn. But I don't want to do the work. I just want to wake up one day and there'd be Spanish in my brain. You know, because like, I think that I think Spanish thoughts. They just come out English. <laughs> I do. Because honestly, I forget that I don't speak Spanish. I'll see a situation happening where there's like somebody who doesn't speak English trying to talk to somebody who doesn't speak Spanish. And I'll be like, oh, let me go help. <laughs> what am I gonna do, help them guess? Come on, let's sound it out together. <laughs> Pale, paleta. I think he wants pasta. <laughs> You're welcome. I don't speak Spanish, but I like to sing in Spanish. Yeah, because I'm good at memorizing lyrics. I just have no idea what I'm saying. So I sing in Spanish all the time. Este corazón que aún de adora. Like something about a heart, like a heart was involved. <laughs> I like to go to the Mexican restaurants when they have the mariachis playing. And I purposely request a song that I know the lyrics to. <laughs> and I'll be like, I'm going to sing it with you. And they get excited. They're like, okay. But they always know a slightly different version than the one I know. Because, like, we'll start singing together. Este corazón que aún de adora. Tarde con tarde. Take it away! Wish, wish I could speak Spanish. I get anxiety about it. I didn't even know what anxiety was at first. Like, I thought I just had the what ifs. Like the what if questions that creep into your mind and play tricks on you. Like, oh, what if she didn't text me back because she's mad at me? What if everybody I love dies? What if Starbucks runs out of cold brew? The what ifs, what ifs, all day long what ifs. And I've been like that since I was a kid. Like every day, my mom would drop me off at school and I would cry because I thought she was going to die. Yeah, I was real sad. She'd be like, bye, have fun. I'd be like, bye, don't die, okay? <laughs> and sad, my teachers had to send me to therapy. 
They told the therapist, they're like, okay, listen, her mom is a trigger. <laughs> we think she might be beating her. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> no, how stupid. <laughs> my mom's not beating me. That's my dad, that's not why I'm crying. <laughs> just didn't want her to die. <laughs> Even now as an adult, if I'm driving down the highway and I see a car accident, I immediately pray for that person. Whoever's in the accident, I pray for them. And then I pray for my husband. I say, Jesus, please don't let my husband get in an accident. Please don't let my mom get in an accident. Please don't let my sister get in an accident. And then I feel guilty if I then don't name every single person that I know. <laughs> so by the time I get to wherever I'm going, I'm like 15 minutes late because I had to sit in my car and finish my prayer. <laughs> And then I feel bad because I left my husband's family all vulnerable, didn't even pray for them. <laughs> Just skip right over, prayed for my dog. Yes, I did, plead the blood, hallelujah, Shabbat. Oh, <laughs> well, y'all don't pray for your dogs? <laughs> oh, well, I hope they don't die then. <laughs> the what ifs, they creep into my mind, like, Every day, my husband goes to the gym. And every day, I say the same thing. Bye, have a good workout. Don't die, okay? <laughs> and then I run to the window, and I watch him drive away. <laughs> like I'm a dog. <laughs> That's when my husband actually leaves the house. But this is how bad it gets. Sometimes, even if we are both at home, and I just haven't seen him in a while, the what ifs creep in my head. I start asking myself questions. Why haven't I seen him in a while? Maybe he slipped in the bathroom. Maybe he hurt himself in the garage with his tools. No, he don't have any tools. <laughs> this is how it works. If we are both home, at the same time, and I haven't seen my husband in a while, he gets three babes before I freak out. <laughs> babe! Babe! <laughs> babe! <laughs> three babes. If he's out and about enjoying his life, and I text him, he has three minutes to reply. If I text my husband and he hasn't replied in three minutes, I've already imagined his death, his funeral, the outfit I wear to the funeral, the guy that I date afterwards that never measures up to him. <laughs> if he's out and about enjoying his life, <laughs> I stalk him on social media. I do. I mean, technically it's not stalking because we're married. I just care as much as a stalker would. <laughs> I mean, before we met, did I look him up on Facebook and was very careful to not like any of his photos from 2009? <laughs> sure. Then did I Google him and find out everything about him, realize we're perfect for each other and soulmates? Yeah. But that's not stalking, you guys. That's called dating. <laughs> that's how dating works. I mean, maybe some of you are like, mm, I don't know, it sounds like stalking to me. Well, then maybe you're right. Maybe I am a stalker, but it doesn't matter. Because as soon as he put a ring on it, I graduated from stalker to wifey. Summa cum laude, suckers! <laughs> hey, yo! <laughs> I still do it. Like, he'll be out and about. I'll check his Instagram, see if he's posted anything yet. If he hasn't, I'm like, dang it, where is he? <laughs> and that's usually when I check my Friend Finder app. <laughs> Do you guys know that app? <laughs> Find my friends. Okay, for those of you that don't know, I'm about to change your life. <laughs> and for those of you that do know, but your partner doesn't, I'm about to change yours too. <laughs> Friends 
is an app that allows you to share your location with someone so they always know where you're at. So I shared my husband's location with me. <laughs> so I always know. Sometimes he'll come home, I'll be like, what'd you get at the grocery store? How'd you know I was at the grocery store? You told me. <laughs> you don't remember? <laughs> Losing your mind. <laughs> Let me give you guys a little warning though, okay? Before you go downloading the app, having all kinds of fun. Sometimes, find my friends is not 100% accurate. <laughs> it may lead you to conclusions. I'll tell you a little story. There was this one night. It was raining. Not really, but for theatrical effect. My husband went to the movies with some friends. He was gonna be home around 11 o'clock. Well, I fell asleep. I wake up in the middle of the night. It's 2 a.m. I look over and my husband is not next to me. My first thought, oh my God, he died. <laughs> it wasn't like, ooh, he's out there cheating. Because that would mean, oh my God, he died. up, my husband's not next to me, I start to freak out, the what ifs, they start to roll. I pick up my phone and I call him, he doesn't answer. I text him, he doesn't reply. I check his Instagram, he didn't post anything. <laughs> and then I get stuck scrolling for about 35 minutes. <laughs> Went down a few rabbit holes that night. <laughs> Learned a couple of good recipes. <laughs> recipes I'm never gonna try but they make it look so easy. <laughs> That's how you make Dutch apple pie cake pop tart leftover bites? 12 cheese macaroni? Well, I didn't even know there was 12 cheeses. <laughs> Let's see, you got cheddar, gouda, string, <laughs> whiz, Queso fresco. <laughs> I'm gonna have to Google the rest. <laughs> and then I remember, oh my God, he died. <laughs> and that is when I check my friend finder app. And it shows his location stopped in the middle of the freeway by our house. I thought he was in an accident. I said, oh no. Oh no, I gotta go to that location. I gotta go there right now. But I gotta brush my teeth first. <laughs> this is why I had to brush my teeth first, you guys. Because if I get to that location and there are first responders there, if they have to give me bad news, my response would be something like, ah! <laughs> breath. <laughs> they don't deserve that. So I start brushing my teeth and I'm thinking all the thoughts. I knew it. It's too good to be true. I should have prayed for him that one time. I finished brushing my teeth. And I start walking downstairs, practicing my solemn thank you. <laughs> Do you guys know the solemn thank you? It's very similar to the solemn I'm sorry you say at a funeral. When you're at a funeral and you want to give your condolences to someone, you say, I'm sorry, in a whisper tone like that. And that communicates to them, I'm sorry for your loss. Because if you say it at regular volume, I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, that communicates, I had something to do with this. 
So I'm walking downstairs, practicing my solemn thank you. I get downstairs, I get to the kitchen, I grab a glass of water. <sighs> he used to love water. <laughs> I start walking to the living room, his favorite spot, the couch, where he would watch movies and pretend like he didn't fall asleep. I get to the couch, and I'm standing there ready to mourn my husband. You can see there's a couple of pillows thrown about. There's a blanket falling off to the side. I go and I turn the light on so I could get a better look. And there he is, asleep on a couch. <laughs> Find my friends lied to me. It told me my husband was dead. I already downloaded a dating app on my phone. couldn't do the apps. I'm so glad I don't have to date anymore because like, as soon as I got married, I lost all charm and ability to flirt. <laughs> like, and I get it, like I'm married, I'm not supposed to be flirting. But like, even if I'm just at the grocery store and a guy's like trying to be flirty with me, I get so awkward. Like if a guy tries to flirt with me, I'm like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Like, Ange, just because you're married doesn't mean you have to get ugly for strangers. <laughs> and sometimes, like, I'll be sitting with my single friends, and we're just, like, hanging out, and they'll be on the apps, like, swipe, swipe, swipe. And I'm sitting next to them on Instagram, like, scroll, scroll, scroll. <laughs> I'm on Instagram a lot. Sometimes I'll just sit on the couch and just scroll through Instagram for, like, hours. And my husband's like, you're addicted to your phone, which is a little extreme. So I text him back, no, I'm not. <laughs> but I am, I'm on my phone a lot. Like, way too much. But the people who use their phone while they're on the toilet, that's disgusting. <laughs> and I am one of those people. <laughs> what, you thought I wasn't? Girl, please. Sometimes I go to the bathroom and I sit down, and I'm like, oh, man, forgot my phone. <laughs> and I just got to sit there all bored. <laughs> I wonder what my phone is doing. Crown molding? <laughs> oh, somebody needs to clean in here. <laughs> That's one option. If you go to the bathroom and you forget your phone, you could just sit there bored. Or you can do the squat and run. Do you guys know the squat and run? <laughs> the squat and run is when you know where your phone is. It's not that far away. <laughs> so you squat and run. Maybe some of you are like, ugh, that's nasty. <laughs> then don't do it. <laughs> I 
this is how bad it's gotten. I used to take my phone with me to the bathroom only when I knew I was gonna be there for a while. <laughs> but now, even if I just have to pee, I take my phone. I sit down, I pee, start scrolling through Instagram. Next thing you know, been there so long, gotta pee again. <laughs> Two pee cycles? It's a problem. If you go to the bathroom and you forget your phone, these are your options. You can sit there bored, do the squat and run, or you can call for an assist. <laughs> Faye! Faye! <laughs> Faye? He gives me anxiety even when I'm on the toilet. <laughs> get anxiety about all kinds of things. Like, I get anxiety about having kids. My husband and I always said we didn't want kids. And now that I'm getting older, I'm like, hey, are we for sure that we don't want kids? Because our TikTok clocks a tick. <laughs> and I always said I didn't want kids because I like my life just the way it is. I don't want to have a kid and mess it up. <laughs> But all my friends have kids. Like my friend Maya, she has two kids. She'll tell me sometimes, she'll be like, oh my God, Mateo has the flu. He was throwing up all night. I had to be up at 5 a.m. to go to work. Then I have to pick up Noah from school with foot hand mouth disease, whatever that is. <laughs> I haven't slept since 2006. <laughs> but it's so worth it. <laughs> really? doesn't sound worth it. <laughs> but then I look at my nephew, my sister's son, Austin. I love that kid. He's the coolest little kid. Like, he's funny. He's got a good personality. Uh, he's kind. He loves people. He's tender-hearted. He has manners. He eats his vegetables. <laughs> I look at him, and I'm like, okay, you know what? If I could be guaranteed to have one like that, <laughs> I will think about it. But then, I look at some of my other friends' kids. <laughs> you ever have a kid in your life that just the thought of spanking them brings you joy? Because <laughs> I have some kids in my life that I'd be like, ooh, you wait till your mom turns around. He fell down, I don't know, that was weird. <laughs> when you don't want kids, you take precautions to make sure you don't have them, like birth control. Well, birth control has hormones, and hormones gave me melasma. You know what melasma is? It's a brown skin mustache. <laughs> yeah, I have a mustache. <laughs> You can't see it because I'm wearing makeup. But when I'm not wearing makeup, I look like my brother. <laughs> That's messed up. Sometimes if I don't want to wear makeup and just be fresh faced, go run some errands, when I get to the store, they ask me my preferred pronouns. <laughs> they go, excuse me, ma'am. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, they. Any of those work, thanks. So now I have a dilemma. Do I want a brown mustache or brown babies? <laughs> I get the what ifs in my mind about having kids. I start thinking, well, what if I can't chase my dreams anymore? Because I moved to Hollywood to be an actress. I'm still trying to be an actress. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I have some very cool credits on my resume, like Alvin and the Chipmunks, Our Family Wedding, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yeah. Like, I have some very cool credits on my resume. But sometimes when I go to say my prayers, I'm like, oh, come on, Jesus, bigger credits than that. <laughs> I'll be honest with you guys. When I lay my head down at night, my dream is not to be a mom. My dream is to play a rape victim on Law & Order SVU. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. 
That's a dream. That's my dream. I remember when I came close to the dream and I booked my first speaking role on a TV show called The Shield. You guys remember that show? It was like a gritty crime drama and I was playing a homeless teenager trying to bum a cigarette off a detective. <laughs> they had me in like a dirty hoodie with a blanket, leaned up against the wall. I was like, ooh, I'm about to win an Oscar for this. <laughs> I did, I called my friends, I was like, hey, how many lines do you have to say on TV to win an Oscar? And they're like, oh, Oscars are for movies. Oh, we'll see about that. <laughs> I was convinced this was gonna be my big break because the fact that I even booked this role was a miracle in itself. This is how it works. If you wanna be on TV, this is how you gotta do it. You gotta get an audition. In order to get an audition, you have to have a resume. To have a resume, you have to have TV credits. To get TV credits, you have to have TV credits. <laughs> like, how does that even work? I don't know. So I just lied on my resume. I thought about whatever show was on TV, and I just put it on my resume. Okay, friends. <laughs> Who did you play? Mm, friend of a friend. Ooh, CSI Miami. Who did you play? Mm, the girl that dies. <laughs> my fake resume got me a real audition. I couldn't believe it. I finally had an opportunity to prove myself, to show that I'm a good actor, that I have what it takes. And I remember showing up at that audition and I'm standing there in front of the casting director and she's looking at my resume and she's like, wow, you were on CSI Miami? Mm-hmm. Because it's not a lie if you keep your mouth closed. Mm-hmm. And she goes, wow, that's funny because I cast that show, I don't remember you. I got caught. <laughs> like, what would you do in that situation? Would you just own it and be like, ah, you got me. I was trying to see if you would catch it. You did. That's a good memory. That's good. No, you don't own it. You double down. You commit to your lie. Because that's your real audition. That's how you prove that you're a good actor. Oh, I looked her straight in the face and I was like, you don't remember me? Girl. <laughs> remember, I came in here, I did my audition, and you're like, oh my God, you're so good. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> she knew I was lying. But she let me audition anyway. And that's the one that I booked. That was The Shield. I was so proud of myself. Yeah. <laughs> I was so proud of myself, I couldn't believe it. I remember the day the episode aired on TV, I had a premiere party at my house. <laughs> I did, everybody came to this party. Like nobody from the show came, but. <laughs> like the who's who of my apartment complex was at this party. <laughs> it was lit, we had pizza, soda, napkins. <laughs> We're all sitting there watching my episode. And I know that my scene is the very last scene of the episode because like save the best for last, I think that's how it works. <laughs> so we're all sitting on the couch, we're all watching my episode and I'm like, okay, here comes a detective. He's about to ask me my question. And then the credits start rolling. <laughs> they cut my part. <laughs> my big break, it broke. <laughs> I was humiliated. <laughs> like getting your part cut from a TV show when you're home by yourself, that's embarrassing. But in front of all your friends and pizza. <laughs> and that wasn't even the most embarrassing part of the night. The most embarrassing part of the night was having to say thank you for coming as people left my party. <laughs> Bye, thanks for coming. Ah. <laughs> You. <laughs> it's fine. Honestly, who cares? <laughs> like, seriously, I don't even care. Okay, bye. <laughs> 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 
I'm still dreaming, though. Still dreaming. Like, I want to be in a scene with Detective Olivia Benson. I want to be in a scene where she's talking to me in her regular voice and then quickly goes into her very serious whisper tone voice. I know you saw the man who attacked you. But listen to me. We're going to get through this together. That moment right there, that's what I want. I'm still chasing that. So I can't have a kid. I can't chase that and chase a kid. <laughs> but let's say I did, though. Let's say I did. Let's say I have a kid, but I still get to chase my dream. What does that even look like? I go and I drop off my kid at his soccer game, and I'm like, bye, have fun. I'll see you later. Mommy's got an audition. No, 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 don't cry. Remember, this is all part of the deal. I have you, but I still get to chase my dreams. <laughs> no, you'll do good. Go have fun. And I start walking away. And I get to my car. And I look back at him. And he's standing there looking at me, waiting for that loving encouragement. So I say, hey, wish me luck. <laughs> I think I'm really going to book it this time. It's right up my alley. They want me to play a young, hip soccer mom. <laughs> and he's like, but you're my soccer mom. <laughs> yeah, that's sad. And now I got to be like, hey, can you teach me how to do that? <laughs> like, how do you make it come out of one eye only? <laughs> no, now I got to kick it into parenting mode. Hey, 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 Johnny, <laughs> come here. I know you want me to stay and give you Capri Suns and orange wedges. <laughs> but listen to me. <laughs> We're going to get through this together. See ya. Dun, 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 dun. dreaming. I'm very grateful, though. Very grateful for all the steps in my journey that got me to where I am today. I've had uh, so many different jobs before I stepped on this stage. Like, at one point, I was a waitress at three different restaurants, and I was terrible at all of them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, I'd take people's order. They'd be like, I'll take the chicken. Okay, cool. Steak, steak, steak. <laughs> And I was younger, so I didn't really drink alcohol at the time. And people would ask me, like, oh, what kind of tequila do you have? Oh, pff, a lot. <laughs> at another point in my life, I was a go-go dancer for kids' parties. <laughs> yeah, there'd be, like, a bar mitzvah, right? You guys know what a bar mitzvah is? Like a Jewish quinceanera. <laughs> there'd be a bar mitzvah. And they would hire a DJ and professional dancers to come and get the kids dancing and having a good time. So I was like, oh, I was a cheerleader. I could do that. Come on, kids. When I dip, you dip, we dip. <laughs> Cha-ching, pay my rent. <laughs> At another point in my life, I worked for a princess party company. You know where they have a Disney princess show up at your kid's birthday party? What character do you guys think I was? Jasmine? No. <laughs> Belle? No. Pocahontas? No. Why? 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 No. Close, <laughs> sir. First of all, I said, who do you think I was, not you? Who else? Who do you think? Esmeralda? No. Ariel? Okay, you're all wrong. I was a clown. Yeah, they wouldn't even let me be a princess. They're like, no, we got that covered. We do need a clown, though. And I wasn't even like the creepy, red nose, big hair clown. No, I was the even creepier 1800s porcelain doll sitting on your grandma's shelf clown. You know the one that I'm talking about? The one that follows you with its eyes? 
yeah, that was me. All creepy, showing up at kids' parties like, hey, kids. Isn't it funny to chase my dream? I have to be your nightmare. I remember there was this one weekend, I had a kid's birthday party booked, where I had to show up, be a clown, giving my energy. But that same weekend, I started my period. Now, ladies, you know, day one, two, three, that's the worst. That's when your cramps are on level 100. You're nauseous, you're fatigued, you're sweating, you don't want to get out of bed, you're emotional, you just want to curl up in a ball and rock back and forth. It was that day. You know that day. <laughs> and if you don't, I hate you. <laughs> I, couldn't call in, I couldn't call in sick to a kid's birthday party? No, I had to woman up. And I showed up at that party like a dead clown. <laughs> with makeup running down my face. <sighs> Okay, kids, everybody gather around. We're gonna play a new clown game. Everybody take your hand and put it on the ground. And then what I want you to do is everybody just lay down. Elevate your back. <laughs> or option to pull your knees in tight. And just rock back and forth. <laughs> this game sucks. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, well, you lose. <laughs> How about some balloon animals? How about some balloon animals? Okay. Here, it's a worm. <laughs> I'm very grateful for all the jobs that I've had to get here. I'm very grateful. I can't believe that this is what I get to do. I get to tell jokes and make people laugh all over the world. What a blessing. <laughs> So grateful for that. That's, that's part of the way that I, I combat my anxiety is I use gratitude and I shift my perspective, you know? Like, I'll be like, you know what? I'm so grateful I have a mustache. Because, <laughs> like, not everybody does, so. <laughs> so grateful. I've been touring for 15 years. And uh, thank you. When you've been touring as long as I have, you end up needing help, like a road manager, an assistant, and you end up becoming very close with this person because you spend so much time with them. And it's like you find your new best friend that you write off on your taxes. <laughs> My old assistant I used to have, I had her for seven years, and she was great. We got along really well because we were similar but different. Like, I thought I was positive with upbeat energy, and then I met her. <laughs> Anybody else here have that one friend that's just extra? <laughs> like, they always on 100. <laughs> if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen her. Her name is Jaquie. Not Jackie. Jaquie. <laughs> it's spelled... J A dash capital K E E apostrophe. <laughs> Extra. <laughs> you guys, the apostrophe in her name does not do anything. That is literally extra. <laughs> Let me try to describe her for you guys so you know what I was working with every day. Jaki is a little white girl. There's a twist you didn't see coming. 
Jaki is always happy. She's like Buddy the Elf, live in person. <laughs> Imagine this for a second. Imagine we have a little kid here, and we give this kid way too much sugar. And then you take that kid to Disneyland for the very first time. And right when you think they're about to explode with excitement, you give them a puppy. <laughs> That's Jaki. <laughs> On a Tuesday, Jaki gets excited about mundane things. Ooh, this water's delicious. What kind of water is this? Tap water. Mmm. I started to feel bad that I couldn't match her excitement about stupid things. <laughs> After a while, I started to ignore her, but then I felt bad for ignoring her. But then I noticed something. I was like, wait a minute. She don't need me to co-sign on her excitement. She is her own cheerleader. <laughs> she doesn't even need me in this conversation. <laughs> this is an actual conversation that happened with me and Jaki. She says this, hey, do you think a caterpillar knows it's going to be a butterfly, or is it a surprise? <laughs> I pretend that I don't hear her. So she replies to herself, I love surprises. Here's the thing. Everybody has a jaki in their group. You might be the Jaki of your group. <laughs> this is how you can determine if you are, in fact, the Jaki of your group. You got to ask yourself these questions. One, do I like sparkly things? <laughs> Two, do I smile at strangers? <laughs> Three, do I then hug the stranger because they smiled back? <laughs> Four, this one's a little random, but it's very essential to being Jaki. You gotta ask yourself, do I often fall down? <laughs> I'll give you a second to determine who is your Jaki. <laughs> Did you find her? <laughs> you found her, she's right there. You fall down a lot. You co-sign that? That's... <laughs> tell, me, tell me if she does this one. This is what Jaki does. Jaki will trip over some stuff that is not there. <laughs> and then, and then she'll be like, what was that? <laughs> that was you, girl. <laughs> that was your left foot, met your right foot. <laughs> and when Jaki falls, she can't just trip and then get back up and go about her life. No, she has to make sure everybody saw it. When Jaki falls, she falls like this. She'll be walking down the street. Oh! <laughs> Did you see it? Did you see it? Just black. <laughs> this is how extra Jaki is. One time, she hurt herself by reenacting a fall from the week before. <laughs> we were in our hotel room and she's telling me how she fell last weekend and she's acting it out for me. She's like, yeah, I was just walking up this step. Oh, oh, I just broke my toe. I need you to take me to the doctor. I just broke my toe. I took her to the doctor, we get there. She's like, I broke my toe, I need an x-ray. All right, let's get you in there immediately. The doctor takes an x-ray of her foot. He comes back and he's like, okay, listen. I don't know how to tell you this, but uh, there's nothing wrong with your toe. Are you sure your machine is not broken? Uh, yeah, my machine is not broken. And neither is your toe. <laughs> you might have sprained it. I can give you some aspirin. You want some aspirin? Is that all that you can do for me? I mean, we have those booties that people wear, but that's like if you tear your ACL or break your ankle. Oh, okay, I'll have one of those. <laughs> Now, Jaki has a booty that comes all the way up to here, and she walks like this <laughs> for a sprained toe. <laughs> when I first met Jaki, her energy was a little overwhelming, and it gave me anxiety. Shocker. <laughs> but then I started to think about it and like process it, and I was like, you know what? That is a strength 
The fact that she can be happy all the time, that is a strength that I do not have because I have emotions. <laughs> and I wear them on my face. So when we were out and about, if a problem came up, there was an issue that needed to be resolved, I always had Jaki handle it. Because when I handle problems, sometimes I get a little ethnic. <laughs> a little spicy. A little picante. I'll give you an example. There was this one weekend we were traveling. We are flying all day. We were headed to the south, and it was the summertime, so it was hot, humid, and muggy. As soon as we landed, it was late at night. We get into our rental car. We drive straight to the hotel, park it, lock it, go to sleep. Next morning, wake up. We get in the rental car, and that is when we realize that it smells like pee. Somebody peed in this car. They rented it to us. And now, it's been hotboxing all night. <laughs> oh, it was disgusting. And Jaki was like, maybe a toddler's diaper leaked. I said, uh, no, Jaki. This is full-grown man pee. It is disgusting, and we need to take this car back. So we drive all the way back to the airport, just marinating the whole way. And if I walk into that rental place and I handle that situation, I'm going to come in real hot, okay? I'm going to come in a little passionate. I'm going to come in there like, oh, y'all just hand out pee, pee cars now? <laughs> like, y'all don't check them, you don't clean them, sniff, sniff, nothing. Just on to the next, right? Because you got your money, right? Oh, no, I'm calm. I am calm, sir. I, I'm sorry I cut in front of you. I am calm. No, I'm not gonna leave here until you tell me who peed in my car. Was it one of you? You did it on your break, that's why it's funny. No? Nobody peed? Okay, that's fine. You know, we'll just handle it like I do with my dog. Everybody come here, put your nose in it. Did you do this? <laughs> Now, I know that's a little extreme, that is not very nice, and that is not of the Lord. <laughs> so I send Jaki in there with her syrupy sweetness, and Jaki handles it like this. <laughs> Hi. Actually, wait, let me start over. Do over, do over. Hi. As you can see, I'm disabled. <laughs> Listen, our car kind of smells like urine. Ugh. <laughs> Is there anything you can do to help us out? Yes, I'll take a free upgrade. Give me a hug. Jaki is always happy. And that is why I like to scare her. <laughs> because you take somebody with that amount of joy and excitement, and you put them in a scary situation, that is hilarious. <laughs> One time I tricked her into staying at a haunted hotel. We went to Canada and I heard about this hotel that was haunted. So I was like, hey, Jaki, uh, put us up at this hotel over here. She's like, okay. So we get there, and I'm like, it's nice, right? And she goes, yeah, so nice. <laughs> I said, it's haunted. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, it's a haunted hotel. What room number did they give you? Listen, she could have told me any room in the hotel. I was going to respond the same way. 432? Wait a minute. They did not give you room 432. Yeah, why? What's wrong with room 432? Oh, no, nothing's wrong with it. It's just that you got the bigger room, that's all. But it's totally fine. Don't even worry about it. Have a good night.
What a jerk. <laughs> One time I made her come with me on a midnight cemetery tour. I was like, come on, Jackie, let's go. It'll be fun. Oh, it's okay. I'll just stay at the hotel. Oh, no, you're on the clock. We're going. <laughs> we get to the cemetery. It's pitch black dark. I am the only one with a flashlight. Jackie is right behind me. And I just take off running and leave her in the dust. <laughs> I'm very into the haunted, paranormal, ghosty type stuff. Anybody else in that kind of stuff? Yeah. Like, everywhere I go, I like to look up, see if there's anything haunted in the area, maybe go check it out. So when I got here, I started Googling. I was like, where in Phoenix is it haunted? And then Google was like, go outside. But doing my research, I came to the realization that most ghosts are from the 1800s. Like anytime you hear about a ghost story, it's usually like, oh yeah, that's uh, Mabel. She died in 1806 from seasonal allergies. You don't ever hear about a 1997 ghost. You've never heard the story. Oh yeah, that's uh, Stacy. <laughs> she died in 97. She was crossing the street while checking her pager. <laughs> I like scary movies. You guys like scary movies? Yeah. yeah. Love scary movies. I mean, sometimes they're a little predictable, you know? Like you can always tell when the ghost is gonna come on the screen because the music changes. It turns into like creepy classical music or Johnny Cash. <laughs> but not if your ghost was Stacy. Nah, if Stacy was your ghost, she'd wake you up in the middle of the night with no scrubs. No scrubs. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Stacy's creepy. If I got to pick which kind of ghost I wanted to haunt me, I would pick a millennial ghost. A millennial ghost named Dylan. He has a man bun. When you're being haunted, your personal things go missing. So all my hair ties would disappear. <laughs> they say if you're being haunted by an evil spirit, people have reported the smell of something foul, like sulfur. But if Dylan was haunting you, you'd wake up to the smell of fresh roasted coffee beans. <laughs> Organic fair trade. <laughs> Could you imagine waking up every morning to the smell of coffee? And then you run to the kitchen? And there's never coffee. <laughs> Dylan. <laughs> or maybe it was a girl millennial ghost named Dylan. <laughs> she wears her hair in a messy bun. Yeah, I'd probably pick her to haunt me. Because she'd probably just forget to scare me because she was on her phone. <laughs> she'd just tweet me a boo emoji. <laughs> Hashtag scary. <laughs> Hashtag right behind you. <laughs> I grew up watching the scary movies and scary TV shows. My favorite TV show growing up was Unsolved Mysteries. <laughs> right? That was my show. And like, I would watch it when I was home alone by myself because that made it scarier. <laughs> as soon as that theme music started, whoo, forget it. I'm not going pee till my mom gets home. 
even now as an adult, if I'm home alone watching something scary on TV, and then I got to walk all the way down the hallway to the bathroom, I'll start singing praise and worship songs <laughs> for protection. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells, you got to get aggressive, you got to get aggressive with the ghosts, you got to let them know you ain't playing no games, oh you think this a game ghost, oh you trying to scare me, well you didn't see me over here in my Merlot taking my communion, Blood of Christ! <laughs> Been touring for 15 years, and uh, my favorite thing to do on tour is eat good food. It's my favorite thing to do. Like, everywhere we go, we try to find the best food. Like, and we want to find that local, family-owned, you can only get this right here type of place. You know what I'm talking about? So everywhere we go, we get the best food except when we went to Birmingham, Alabama. I'll tell you what happened. We get to Birmingham, and I'm doing my thing where I'm just talking to people, asking people where we should go eat. Like, hey, where's the hot spot? Where do you go? I want to know. Let's go. This girl recommends a Mexican restaurant. I was like, aww. No, thank you. Because we're in Birmingham, Alabama. I don't want Mexican food here. Like, we're in the South. Take me where I can get some Southern food, like biscuits and gravy, shrimp and grits, butter on butter. But she said a Mexican restaurant. I was like, ooh, hard pass. Thanks, though. But then I started thinking about it. And I was like, you know what? Hold on. Let me not judge, OK? Because people know their city. They know what's up where they live. They know where to eat. They know the hot spots. I was like, you know what? Let me not judge. Also, let me not limit my people because maybe one of my people done immigrated over here. <laughs> and maybe when he got here, he was like, keep going. Don't look back. <laughs> By the time he looked up, he's in Birmingham, Alabama. <laughs> Is this California? <laughs> nah, you went the wrong way. Anyway. <laughs> but maybe he decided to stay. And maybe he started by making tacos on a little taco cart right outside of the nightclub. Everybody starts hearing about Jaime's tacos. <laughs> hey, have you ever had one of Jaime's tacos? Those are the best tacos I've ever had in my life. Jaime's tacos, Jaime's tacos. Maybe he is so popular, he opens up a taco truck. Hey, have you ever been to Jaime's taco truck? Those are the best tacos I've ever had in my life. Jaime's tacos, Jaime's tacos. Maybe he gets so popular, he opens up his very first restaurant in Birmingham, Alabama, Jamie's. <laughs> Maybe that's what happened. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? Let me not judge. Let me go ahead and check out this Mexican restaurant in Birmingham, Alabama. So we get there. As soon as I walk in, I notice that it's all white people, not one Mexican. <laughs> Strike one. <laughs> Listen, this is not about white people. This is about the rules of restaurants. <laughs> Whatever restaurant you go to, whatever culture that restaurant is, if you do not see the people of that culture in that restaurant, leave. <laughs> because if they won't even co-sign on this, it's not legit. <laughs> if you go to a Chinese restaurant and you don't see no Chinese people, girl, bye. Even if you see one Chinese guy, listen real close, he might be adopted, don't fall for it. <laughs> you need two cosigns in that situation. <laughs> I walk into this Mexican restaurant, I didn't have no cosigns. I became the cosign. <laughs> I was like, oh man, we 
we already drove all the way out here. Let's just give it a shot. We sit down. They charged me for chips and salsa. <laughs> Strike two. Everybody knows that chips and salsa are free. <laughs> It is our gift to humanity. <laughs> oh, but not in Birmingham, Alabama. Chips and salsa, that'll be two seventy-five. dollars 75 please? I'm sorry, is Jaime here? <laughs> if that wasn't bad enough, this next moment is where my life changed. I'm reading the menu, and it says they have guacamole and seasonal guacamole. I said, seasonal guacamole? What's that? Are there any Mexican people here tonight? Okay, let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard of seasonal guacamole? Me either. I never heard of it in my whole Mexican life. <laughs> I didn't know what it was. I had to ask my waiter. I said, um, excuse me, sir. <laughs> yeah, Chad. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Uh, what comes in the seasonal guacamole? And he says, Walnuts and candied apples. <laughs> Y'all, I was personally offended. I could not believe they were doing this to my people. I knew I needed to say something, I needed to speak up. This was my si se puede moment. But we were in the South, so the only words that would come out of my mouth were, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> you take that guacamole back to the pit where it came from. I do not receive that. Get under my feet, devil. <laughs> I'm Angela Johnson Reyes. Thank you so much. I think he's Maltese, Shih Tzu, and have an E. Mordo? Maltese, Ewok. Ewok breed by percentage. 25% Yorkshire Terrier, 12.5% Cocker Spaniel, 12.5% Maltese, 12.5% Miniature Schnau Schnauzer? He did have a mini. Oh, 12.5% Shih Tzu, 25% breed groups. So he's mostly Yorkshire Terrier. She's the one who's gonna scare me. I am. I'm <laughs> like, don't run to me! <laughs> A millennial ghost named Dylan. He has a man bun. Or maybe it was a girl millennial ghost named Dylan. She wears her hair in a messy bun. And I booked my first speaking role on a TV show called The Shield. And I was playing a homeless teenager trying to bum a cigarette off a detective. 